Okay, in this tutorial we're going to talk about setting up firewalls and port forwarding for gaming. And the lesson is basically going to be how, about how port forwarding works and how firewalls work. And we're going to use the game as a way of demonstrating that. Now we've got a multiplayer game that we've downloaded. I've gone to a website here. I'll show you the website. And it's Scorched 3D. And if you just do a Google search for Scorched 3D, and then click on the download link, it'll come to a page like this. And this is the download page. And if you scroll down, there's versions for Microsoft, Linux, Mac OS X, all kinds. So download the Windows version. And I've downloaded it already to my computer here. I'll show you. And I've got the installer here, and I've installed the program. And I'll launch the program here to show you. Okay, so here's the program, and we'll get to that in a second. So in this diagram, we're going to talk about basically what we're going to do. We're going to have the game server on this computer, which has a wireless connection to a wireless router over here. And so what we need to do to get this game to work is we need to open up our firewalls. And we've got two firewalls that we're going to have to deal with. We've got the host-based firewall on this computer, on this Windows 7 computer. And we also have a network device firewall on our wireless router. And we're not going to worry about this router over here. Uh, I believe that we have communications already set up in between going across this router, so that should be OK. We also have a couple of students over here who've downloaded the game and want to connect to the server to play the multiplayer game, right? So that's what we're going to do now. OK, so first things first. So we've got the game here. And first off, the game says start the server. So I'll click start the server. And I need to give the server a name. So I'll give it a name, let's say like Dan's Courses. Notice the port number, 27270. That's the port number. Right, so um, we're going to need to um, remember that because we're going to have to use that port number and open that up on our firewall. I'm going to allow all internet users to see and use this server, and I'll click Start Server. So the server's firing up. Now, the server's firing up, but we're going to have to basically open a port on our firewall to allow traffic for these outside computers to reach our server. And you can see right away that automatically Windows says, hey, do you want to allow this computer right, access to the firewall? And um, all right, so I'll say allow access, or I can hit cancel and do it manually. Right? It's up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'll hit cancel, and then we'll go in and we'll set it up manually. So I'll hit cancel. Right? So our server's running. And there's people who want to connect to this server, right? So we need to open up our firewall. So I'll go to Start, Control Panel, and I'm going to go to System and Security, and Windows Firewall. And you can see that our firewall is on. You see the green check marks here. So what we want to do is we want to allow a program or feature through our Windows Firewall, or we want to go to the Advanced Settings. I'm going to click on Advanced Settings and see if we can set this up manually. So here's the advanced settings for the Windows Firewall. And it is pretty nice compared to the old Windows XP um, model, right? So I'm going to click Inbound Rules. And I'm going to click over here on New Rule. I'm over here now. We'll set up a new rule here. All right. And I can set up a rule that allows a program through or a port through. And so I'll choose Port. And I'll hit Next. And I'll say TCP. I want TCP. I probably want TCP and UDP. So we'll do TCP first. So I'll say 27, 27, 0. I'll hit Next. Allow the connection. Perfect. Next. Across all networks, fine. Next. And I'll give it a name. And I'll say Scorched 3D. TCP, and I'll hit Finish. All right, so there's my TCP open, right? And I'll create another rule and allow UDP through. So we'll say port, and this time it'll be UDP 27, 27, 0, and next, 
allow the connection, next, and give it a name. Okay, so that should be all that we need to allow this to work. So now our Windows firewall is allowing port 27270 through, right? And so that should, that should help us out. Now, we're not done yet because even though the server is up and, and ready to go, right, we have our users who need to connect to us, and our users can't see the server, the IP address of the server, over here because they're on different network completely. So they need to be able to contact this wireless router on the wireless router's WAN port. So for this to work, what we need to do is we need to configure this wireless router here, its firewall, and we're going to have to set up port forwarding so that this wireless router forwards that port over to the game server. So we'll need to do two things. First of all, I'm going to need to figure out what is my IP address on this computer. So I'll run a command prompt, and I'm looking for my private IP address on this computer. And you can see that I'm 3.145, 192.168.3.145, IP version 4, um, IPv4 address, 192.168.3.145. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and talk to the wireless router and see if we can get it to let us in. So we'll go here and we'll say... And we'll contact, you can see that my wireless router is a DDWRT wireless router. Um, I'm going to go to NAT, Network Address Translation, and it's going to ask me for a password. So we'll do that. We're on the NAT and Quality of Service tab, and I'm selecting Port Forwarding. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a port forwarding rule to allow people that when they contact this wireless router, it's going to forward them to our server behind the wireless router. So what I'll do is I'll click Add. And now we'll put in these settings. So we'll put Scorched 3D. We want both protocols, both TCP and UDP. Source network, I'm going to leave it blank, signifying any network, but we do want to target port 27270, and we're going to forward it to IP address 192.168.3.145, which should be the IP address of our game server. And we also need to forward it to port 27270. Why is that? Well, this game is listening on port 27270, so we want to forward it to the game server on that port so that it'll know how to respond. So I'll click Enable, and then I'll hit Apply Settings, and we'll see if it takes. And it looks like it took, so we should be good. Now, for people to reach this game server, they're not going to reach the game server on the IP address of the game server. They're going to have to reach the game server through the firewall on the WAN side, right? Through basically its outside presence. And in this network, the outside presence of our DDWRT.com is at 192.168.2.2. So that'll be the IP address that the students in the network will try to reach. So they're going to try to reach that address. So I'll close this window, and I'll minimize this window, and we'll see if we can start playing. Okay, I, we needed to start and stop the server a few times and do a little troubleshooting to get this to work, but I think we've got it now. So I'm going to relaunch the program and talk about what I had to do. Well, the firewall rules turned out they were fine. The firewall rules were fine, but one other thing that I did do on the firewall was this. I, I don't really think it's necessary, but on the firewall, I did go to the allow a program or feature through the firewall, and if you do that, you can scroll down, and I scroll down to Scorched, and you can see that I've got the Scorched TCP and UDP showing up in there, but also, this is the Scorched program, and then I checkmarked the public icon to allow it through, right? So you can see here that 
I did allow the program itself publicly through. And if you wanted to change settings, you just click the check mark here. And so what I did was is I just check marked this to allow the program through. No big deal. I don't really think that had an effect. So let's relaunch the server and I will show you something I did have to change. So I'm going to launch the server and under settings, I went to settings for the program and I changed my screen resolution to 1024 by 768 and I changed the game detail options to safe mode since I'm running this in a VM right now, a VMware player VM. Then I went to, um, let's see here, other and I check marked, unchecked, validate server IP. All right, this was check marked, this validate server IP, and I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it says here, checks if the server IP address matches the published address. So I'm not exactly um, certain if that had it, if the server IP address matches the published address. Well, since we're natting behind a firewall, I'm not sure if this would have an effect or if this is just for a proxy scenario. But since this server is behind a firewall and is being natted from 2.2 over to 3.145, I thought that might have an effect. I'm not quite sure, but I unchecked it. And seems now like when I hit Start Server, I've given the server name here, right? The port number 27270. And we'll click Allow all other internet users to see and use this server. We'll hit start server and server fires up and we'll see if people can reach the server here. You can see right here the client has connected. We've got a client connected right here, player one. You can see that some of the students in the lab here are connecting to the server no problem. Right? So if I hit play, all right. We'll hit play online and we'll see here I'm going to switch from internet to LAN and you can see the game server shows up here that I'm running right here. You can see, look at the game server, look at all the action that's happening here. You can just see kind of in real time things that are happening. And there's the server that I've set up. I've got a green light and now all I need to do is click join game. You can see there's two other players here, Brock and Roy, and I'll click join game. So, and now all I need to do is basically pick my tank and hit play, and I'm good to go.